as you saw last episode, we decided to leave the ladies in their little box. But I was just positing through there. They've got a reasonable honey store, but they didn't seem to have much pollen. And I don't know, it's probably another week or two before the trees here decide to flower immensely. There's still a few going, but I thought, what the hell? We'll show you how to make a little bee feeder. Well, we might show you how to make a bee feeder. If you don't see this episode, you know we didn't show you how to make a bee feeder because it didn't bloody well work. I'm just making it up out of what I've got laying around. Luckily the lad found a screw, so we've got a... Oh, we've even found a screw. Ah, look at that. How oh, bloody clever are we? So, my plan is I'm going to cut a little bit in here so we can put the pollen substitute inside the Coke bottle or the Pepsi bottle as it may be, whatever it is. That do. Depends who's sponsoring us. Took the label off because no one's sponsoring us just yet. So anyway, we're going to cut a hole through here put the stuff in there and screw that to the tree so then we'll then if there's any crazy wild pigs down here that want to have a feed they can't get to it so how's that for a plan we've just uh, consulted the brains trust here and um, it's decided that we're going to run the seam along the edge here and then screw it onto the tree and so hopefully the rain will run around and run off well hopefully the girls might have eaten it all before we get to that point so we'll see never know like i said earlier you might not ever see this anyway We'll throw a bit of custom bee feed on top of the hive anyway to give them a bit of a nibble on before it rains. But I just thought this would actually be a good idea. Well, I don't know. One of my stupid ideas maybe, but we'll find out. Don't think we need a real big hole, do we? Nice straight line, Dad. Oh, I tell you. But everyone's an expert. You gotta love it. Don't go like that. Oh, I don't know. Nice straight line. Bloody hell, that was never that <laughs> that was never gonna happen. Just because you're a creator instead of a destructor. Yeah. I was on the internet the other day and I've got this whole bloody thing about how to make um, stuff with old Coke bottles or old plastic um, drink bottles. And there was some dude on there that made this crazy raft. And he'd bloody, how the hell did he do that? He'd cut the end off and he'd push them all together. So he made this bloody great big air sausage. And I thought, man, that was pretty bloody involved, I thought. I thought that was a pretty bloody good effort. Made this bloody bush bee man dude look a bit slack. Anyway, so I reckon we'll shrigle a little bit of stuff in there. Maybe we'll, before we put it in there though, we might actually see if we can screw the bloody lid to the tree. What do you reckon? Look at them, they're all very excited. <laughs> See if I get stunned. <laughs> I bring the cameraman along because they seem to like to sting him rather than me. So. <laughs> right, anyway, now, much to your surprise, I actually even remembered to bring a drill with me because I had a different purpose for it, but. Oh dear, I'll tell you what. So, I've been full arsing around. I don't know whether I should give these guys a plug or not. I suppose I should. <coughs> I've been fooling around making my own artificial pollen, which is basically soy flour and egg powder and vitamin C mix and, oh hell, I don't know, a lot of other mad shit. Egg milk powder. Now, there's shit loads of ones on the internet that you can have a crack at making. And if the girls are really starving, I mean, they'll, they'll take it up. I had some ladies down here before we moved them and they were really sort of doing it tough because it was late summer and it hadn't rained and and they they took onto it but as far as yeah as a general rule they don't seem over keen so the um blokes that make this stuff i don't know what shit in there but they seem to get a bit more attracted to it there's a few other i don't know there's quite a few bee feeding things on the website on, on, on the internet but this is just the one i got which is supposed to be australia's custom bee feed for australia I thought, well, that sounded pretty bloody good, being that I'm Australian. So we thought we'd give a, an Australian version of bee feeding a go. Obviously, this is just a supplement. It's not ideal to think you're gonna, they're going to survive on it all year round, but it just supplements what they're up to. And I just sort of thought, well, those ladies just got a bit of a rev up coming out here. So, like I said, they've got some honey, but they haven't got much pollen. And so maybe they'll give them some of this before they, well, before they find out where the pollen is. So let's have a go at that. We'll screw our Coke bottle to the tree first and see what happens. 
Now, it wouldn't come as any surprise to the regular viewers of the Bush Bee Man that I've stolen off with the wife's drill again. I'm starting to think that perhaps this is becoming my drill. Because <laughs> I've borrowed it that bloody much. I'm fairly sure it won't be very long and I'll be back in the laundry and she'll have had a new one. Because she'd be sick to death of this. <laughs> anyway. Oh, and just as a footnote, the lovely wife's got two batteries, so it's really cool. <laughs> so I actually got the charge that one. I'm not 100% sure where's the ideal place to put a Coke bottle, but that tree looked like a reasonable spot, so when we're driving past, we'll be able to see whether they're in there having a feed or not. So the only, only drama I've just thought of is if we screw the lid to the tree and we actually have a hole in the side of the bottle, when we try to do it up, that probably all the shit's going to fall out, so we might screw it through the tree and then put the stuff in there. Pull this bit off here. Oh shit! <laughs> oh, a bit of nature. I reckon it'll go right. It's just nicely there. I reckon. What do you reckon? Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, that's hard wood. <laughs> Goodness gracious, what have we done, John? What have we done? I think our screw might have been a bit long for this project. Shit, what have I done? Which is backwards. Why is it doing that? What's it done? What have I got on? Oh, hang on. Shouldn't it be there? Shit. Now we're going to be in trouble. Why is it doing that? Any idea? Because it hates me. We'll just try and move that to there because it's on screw, so maybe it's on drill it. Maybe it'll work. I don't know. Oh, fucker. Look at that. <laughs> now we're in trouble. I don't know, it snapped it off. <laughs> Shit. Just because something appears impossible does not necessarily mean it is. Because that actually went in there by that summit or other, so I'll be bugging. Well, I think we definitely made the right decision for the weather. But as an interesting little footnote, normally when you screw your lids on, you can't move the bloody thing. And I was trying to work out how, like, it's quite awkward. But being that we used a broken screw that technically shouldn't even work, you can actually have it hooked firmly and twist it on the perfect screw. So look at that. So we might actually patent this. Just remember to break your screw when you're making a purpose-built pollen feeder. <laughs> We're gonna make ourselves a little scoop out of this tin. The reason why my pocket knife ends up blunt quite often is I do stupid shit with it that you're not meant to do. Our patented scoop we're gonna put into our feeder. If we can get the bloody lid off. Oh. Bloody hell. Right, so this is a bit of bee feed. It doesn't actually tell you what's in it, but I'm tipping that's a reasonably a soy flower base, because soy flower is yellow. And it'll have all sorts of other cool additives and zincs and minerals and... I don't know, you could probably... If you really got motivated, you could probably go on their website and see what all the cool shit that's in there, but... Just for now, we're going to go with this. <laughs> yeah, where are we? You right there? Yeah. I'll get some of it in the pot, you idiot! <laughs> right, yo, yeah, then I figure, sort of like that. And the girls can fly in there and have a bit of a nibble on that lot. Now, just before everybody out there in internet land gets crazy and emails the arse off us, I realise that you can make pollen pallets and put it inside of the box and all the rest of it, but we're acting to be here in the middle of nowhere with the pollen mix and no way to make the patty. So this is the, uh, this is the other version of what we're gonna do. So don't get excited. <laughs> I do know about pollen patties and we can look at that later on. And if we'll just, we might just chuck some on top of their box <laughs> just in case they don't find this shit, what do you reckon? Anyway, we'll see what happens. I'm just gonna give them a little bit of 
a little bit of substitute, sprinkle it on the box so they can have a bit of a nibble on that. If I get stung to death, well, this will probably be the last episode of the Bush Bee Man. So it's been nice viewing with you and thanks for coming along for the trip. Soft cock. <laughs> I'm still standing here. Oh yeah, you got a suit on though. You can pick up the honeycomb since you're so bloody brave. The brave one that went and got the smoker and the sheets. That's uh, soft cock. Wouldn't go back for it. I don't know what his problem is. Well, I didn't have my suit on. That's probably what my problem was. <laughs> excuses, excuses. <laughs> What do you reckon? <laughs> you reckon that's going to work? We might call into the farm on the way past and see if they're eating that, that stuff before it goes completely to shit here, the weather. So, anyway, there you go. That's how to make a in your tree bee feeder if you happen to get some, I know there's, what is that? Bee build, bee, what the fuck was that? Custom bee feed, I think we just said then. There's a few other bee thing we jigs to feed them on. You can, like I said, you can try and make your own mixture which I've done, which hasn't, well, it has been sort of successful, but not really. Anyway, if you've only got a couple of hives in your backyard, you probably never have to worry, but it's bloody good fun to watch them fly off when they've been rolling around in the bee feed, <laughs> and they go off and they look like Snow White and blooming half a dwarf. <laughs>